I'm going to take you a little bit out of order. Working on texture, I was going to do glass next, but my private students are up to skin color right now at, or rendering skin. And I wanted to put this out there. It's everything you need to know about skin tones that nobody tells you before you put your pencil to the paper. What's so hard about skin and what people find it so um, difficult is that skin is really made up of two different things. One is your skin color, but skin also has an undertone, which you have to take into consideration when you're drawing and coloring um, any portraits, especially if it's like when you want to match a color because you're under, you have to put in undertones as well as the skin color. But I'm going to show you some easy ways of doing that um, when I start doing the demo. Today I wanted to talk about what you need for starting portraits. And we're going to just do regular skin tone. Uh, you know, skin as it not, and I don't mean regular as just a color, but getting the smoothness and the shape of the face. There are two sets that are available on the market that are probably the only sets right now I would really recommend for this. One is the Prismacolor 24 pack that's only for portraits. And while you can find every pencil um, in this kit, in your 150 set, it's not 100% necessary. I love this because I was able to just have my skin tones. It was a box that I could just pull and I didn't have to pull pencils and I didn't forget what different ones were for. It made it learning very easy. And then, okay, so what, let me go back on this. I saw this on Amazon for $16 and then I saw it for $38. It's the same set. Prismacolor has not changed their pencils. So one says, oh, brand new set. Well, it's the same set as the $16 one. So it's definitely an inexpensive buy and something that is an excellent teaching tool. The next set that I recommend very highly is the Derwent set. Derwent are professional pencils. You could see this one is brand new. Um, I haven't delved into this one. I have my old set. Um, it's a very soft wax. These are the Color Soft, the Derwent Color Softs. And this is what they consider their skin tone uh, pencils. It's not as many as the Prismacolor, but you get very rich tones and very easy blending. This, I think, was only $14. Very well worth it because you can mix uh, Derwent's with Prismacolors. And to have this, to have the smooth richness of some really professional pencils, I do recommend you doing it, especially if you want um, your portraits not to look like caricatures. So I mentioned before undertones and skin color and that there is a difference. So there's a couple of definitions you're really going to have to know, but by knowing them, you're going to be even better. Undertones. It's the color that's underneath. And if you do makeup or ever put like a foundation on your skin, why one looks a little bit better than the other, it goes with the what the colors are underneath your skin. Asian skin has more of a yellow undertone. So when I start doing Asian skin, I'll use the undertone yellows that come with the sets and just put my base color in there of being um, on the yellower side. On, um, let's see, on Caucasian skin, I would use a pinker or a peachier undertone, um, which comes with this set and it comes with this set. For African American skin, there's, there's color charts all over uh, the internet on what color 
undertone. Use the ones that are for makeup because the ones for makeup are actually professionally blended where they separate it out. It's just a little tip and all you have to do is Google undertones and they give you everything for every skin. They'll actually tell you the skin color and the undertone that creates it. And I don't think they did that for art per se, but they definitely did it for makeup. When you're doing skin, okay, you want to create an illusion of roundness in the face. And I see a lot of people that do skin that they, their skin is very flat. What makes real skin is the little, little details. And what you're going to start out with, I'm going to start with a yellower undertone on this one because she's Asian. I want you to hold the pencil. Remember we talked about holding the pencil down here and holding the pencil with it hit in your hand. I want you to hold it back here when doing this undertone. We want a very smooth and very light um, undertone. So by doing it with your hand in the back, now this was not something that this is something I discovered, not so much something anybody ever taught me. And I don't think anybody ever tells you to do it like this. But by doing such a very, very light undertone, you're going to get very smooth skin. Now, I'm not worried about my contouring and my highlighting. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But... I just want to get a really nice, smooth skin. Okay, once I'm happy with that, and I'm not even sure if it's coming out on camera because I'm looking into my camera and you can only see a very slight difference. That's kind of what I want to see for your base coats. You can barely see it. It's going to get way darker as we go along. Now it's going to look a little funny because I'm only working on one side of the face. After you get your undertone in, let me just do this for another second or two. Okay. After you get an undertone in, which I could see is barely showing, that's when you're going to start with your skin tones. And those are more where you're going to pick your peachy colors. I always start out with light peach for most of my, unless I am doing really dark skin, light peach works really well. As my second coat, I can go slightly heavier but not much but because you have such a smooth undertone it works you're gonna start always from your out working in it was easier for me to do the whole face in the yellowish undertones and you can actually now see it or at least I can from my camera eye <laughs> Now I'm going to put the skin tone on, which is going to be the peach. Because I have the yellowish undertone, I'm going to get a very Asian uh, skin tone. I'm going to cover the whole face, working from the outside in. With my light peach. What you're going to have to do afterwards is just like what they do with makeup is you're going to contour and highlight. I don't really put too much on here because these are going to be my highlight areas. Remember you're working very, very lightly. I don't waste your tooth because you have to put in actual highlights. And of course, I'm working very, very fast. Skin 
usually takes hours and hours to do even this small, you know, face. It's unfortunate when you only have like 20 minutes to do a video to do something that's takes me hours to do. So really slow it down. This is this is false advertising here. Okay, so I have a peach on here. And now I'm going to move to the next part of my recipe. Skin tones are always recipes. When you want to do a dark skin tone, you work from a list of your pencils. There are skin tone recipes all over the internet. It's what you want to um, achieve. Um, I have some that I can give you. I've done some in other skin videos, other people, other videos have normally their skin recipe and write them down and keep them because if you find a skin tone that you like, you always follow it because with skin tone is you build the color by your layers. And if you put one color that's different, your skin tone will be different. So it's usually by the layers and people don't normally tell you that. You want to build everything up. The next color that I'm going to use, so I'm going from my yellow tones. I put my yellow undertone in. You can use, um, in the Prisma set, sometimes sand works well. If you find this is too much, there's, there's other yellow pencils that come in the set that you could choose from. For my skin tones, I always start with peach or light peach, and now I'm working with regular peach. This is the 939. So I covered the face with the peach. Now I'm sort of going to go inward, and I'm not going to take it completely solid. I'm working with the outside. Now, I'm working way too fast. Just keep that in mind. Nobody should be going this fast. I chose this picture because I know I'm not going to finish it. Also, in this video, because it's going to be too much, too soon. Oh, I broke my tip. Too much, too soon. I'm going to not delve so much into how to contour the face. We're going to do a little bit of that. We'll talk a little bit about that. But right now, I'm just working on how to create the tone in the skin. Okay, remember I'm following a recipe. The next pencil in this recipe for this tone would be beige. Um, beige has a little bit of a yellower over, um, undertone to it, so it reacts really nice with the yellows on the skin that I've already put. But before, I've already done this, before I put on another uh, layer, I go back with my light peach and I put another yellow uh, layer, I'm sorry, layer in between because th my light peach is technically my blending, become my blending pencil. So just remember after you do each layer, you're going to go back and you're going to blend the layers down with your light peach. 
I'm not working on contours. I'm not worried about highlighting. I'm just showing you how to create the colors to make a realistic skin. Doing the contours and the highlights will be in another video. And I don't want to push you along before you really understand what you're doing. Okay, so the next color I'm going to be using is the beige. I'm going to start putting back some of those little more golden tones in the skin. Start again on the outside, moving inward. When I do start contouring and highlighting my page, I'm leaving open areas of color. So I'm not putting the beige on where my highlighted areas are going to be, only in my contoured areas. Sometimes it's easier to work pencil going this way. I'm just, for videotaping this, I'm working with the paper going this way. Um, most of the time I'm turning my book completely around and in different directions so that I keep my skin going very smooth and in one direction. I just find that it comes out much better that way. Now, I've said it in the past, I don't usually put chemicals on my paper. I don't use blending mediums or anything like that. My preferred method of blending has always been the lighter shade pencil. That's um, just the way I do it. Remember, everybody's got their own style, and you develop your own style. Nothing is wrong. You can use a blender on this. The only thing I find about if you're going to use a blender on skin, get a designated blender because no matter how much you clean the blender tip off, if you have one blender and you're using it on every color in the box, um, you're eventually going to screw up and a blip of color is going to come out and that's normally not something you can get out. It doesn't really erase well out of the picture. But it's definitely up to you on how you want to do it and where you want to take this. Remember, do your strokes, not scribbling. None of this. I'm going to say that in every video that I ever make is no scribbling. We're doing adult coloring, not children's coloring. Okay, that's good enough. And I'm going to go and move on to my next color. I'm going to come back when I have a blended light peach on it. My next color in this recipe is going to be nectar and I really like nectar if I could now find it okay nectar is starts to uh, bring in some of your redder tones which makes skin not look jaundice so I'm gonna go and you're gonna see it probably immediately as soon as I add in that nectar See how I'm creating the undertones and the overtones. My undertones being the yellows, and now I'm bringing in the fleshier tones and the redder tones. And of course, I say it again, and I know I'm saying it a lot. Don't rush. Take your time. I'm doing this only for the video's sake.
Now you can see over here, it's way redder. It's because I don't have that much overtone, undertone, I'm sorry, on this area of the face. Mostly because I'm going way too fast. As I said, I will get way more detailed. This is a beginning concept of skin. You can't move on to anything else until you understand how to blend the colors together. Okay, now I'm going to add in another layer of light peach to blend it all together again. At this point of the picture's development, I'm starting to think where I'm going to start putting my highlights in. And I'm sort of doing a flat-on face. I haven't done any shadows to one side because I'm really not developing this picture. So if my lights are going right here... I'm going to have, I'm going back to my lightest tone, and there it's going to be in this area. I'm going to just add a fast layer. I'm also going to get out my little white nubby. Everybody's going to start feeling sorry for me. This is my little white nubby. Yes, I'm going to get more. And I'm going to get some white going in the highlight areas. Just so that when you add in a layer of white, you're never going to get a really dark, dark tone in that area. You can color over white, but it's never going to be the same once that white pencil hits. So I just want to keep my lights light. Just in case maybe someday I decide I'm going to do this picture properly. I doubt it. Um, if I didn't mention it before, this is Serene. I got when I was asking everybody what books they like to work out of. A lot of people said they wanted to work out of uh, Serene. And that's by Nicholas F. O I'm really bad at this. Chadrowinata. Ugh. Um, so, I love this book. So does a lot of other people. It comes, I would say, out of coloring books, I would give it a five star for paper, artwork, etc. One, a few of the pictures are a little wonky. I wouldn't touch them, but in general, there's so much to work out of this book that it overshadows the few pictures that I really wouldn't consider doing. And that's really a lot about how I judge a book. I never have a book that I would do every picture in it. Um, I do have books that, when I when I get like up the upward of like between five and ten pictures out of a fifty-page book that I'd actually consider coloring, I think that's pretty good. Okay. My next color that I'm going to add in in my recipe, everybody's recipe is a little different. You're not going to use every pencil in your book. I'm going to add in some clay rose. And the clay rose is going to go on the outsides. And it's going to start forming... Um, con I mean, at this point, for anybody, 
I would be thinking contouring and shading. But since I'm not concentrating on that, it's gonna, you'll see a big difference when it comes to the sides of the face and the roundness in the face. Once you start to get up to the darker levels and you're starting to get your shade into the areas that need to be shaded. Clay Rose, I'm just going to give you a warning to those who decide to use a blending medium on it. Clay Rose blends with a blending medium really bad. I'd probably avoid Clay Rose. It kind of turns the page muddy, but when you use like a the blending style that I use, where I just use the lighter shade of a color, it it really brings out a lot in the in the shaded areas. And as I said, this is so fast, it's almost I I don't copy, do not do a color along with this. Okay, so on this page, we're really going to concentrate in getting a good ball, and that's a lot of shading. Your hairline which and your outline over here are always going to be shaded. Shading and shadow are two different things. We're talking shading now. And I'm going to get out a darker pencil, and this is my dark, what is this, Lead terracotta. This may even be a little bit dark. I don't have my color cards with me, but it would be in general, the next color would be darker. And I'm starting to get just into my shaded areas. And my shadow, like, I'm not my shaded areas, where my shadows are going to be. And I know I'm repeating myself over and over again. I'm not worrying about contour. I'm not trying to really, sh you know, shape her face to make her look, you know, like an individual. I'm doing genetic generic 101 skin tone and this is really why it's very hard to follow some of the YouTube videos that are out there they're good videos but if you don't realize that the artist is creating skin tones along with the shadow and concentrating on that, you're really going to get lost. And that's why your skin tones never look the way they do, you know, when the way the other person is doing it or especially African-American skin where people don't realize ha that you have to put in all that undertone. And African-American skin can be anything from ashy to uh, yellow to red. It's a difficult skin tone to create. I'm going, although I'm going fast, I'm barely touching the paper. My, my, a lot of people have been asking me, oh, you know, how heavy and how, when you're doing skin, the lighter, the better, really light, light, light. Don't damage your tooth. Skim it. That's why if you have to hold your pencil back here, for the whole entire face, if you've got a heavier hand, go for that.
It'll definitely produce a different color depending on where you are holding your hand. Okay, I'm going to go back now. I'm going to blend with a little bit of darker color because I'm kind of making her skin. I'm going to go with a little bit of seashell pink to do the blending. And this just comes with experience being able to do that. Follow your recipe if you're a beginner. The way I got all my skin tone recipes and stuff was mostly by trial and error. But when I've got my basic, like the first four pencils, your tone pencil, your basic skin, which would be like a peach, your light peach, your peach, your nectar, after that it's... It's like adding too much salt or not enough salt or adding pepper to a recipe that makes you a chef versus just a household cook. And every chef will tell you that it takes, you know, a little bit of knowledge, when to add an acid, when to add, you know, little things to tweak up a recipe. Now, I am get, starting to get into contouring because I'm going to stop it now be, only because now to develop it even further, I have to do contour on the face. Um, contour is where I'm going to take the colors and I'm going to start to mold the face, like with the nose. I'm starting to get a little darker around this area for the nose. And that's going to make the nose more prominent. That's going to bring the nose out. Um, this is another area that people neglect. I think it's called the vestibule. And that area takes actual some practice because you're actually going up, down, up, down in a very small space. And if you do it opposite, your picture becomes a little wonky. And while I didn't teach eyes, once you get to that point where you're comfortable doing every aspect of the face, do your eyes first. And it's just like when I say, do your main focal point of the picture first. I always say that. Do the main focal point of the picture first, because if you screw it up, you've spent a lot of time on it. I don't always follow every rule that I set for you, but it's just my suggestions. For me, I don't normally screw up my eyes anymore, but I have screwed them up in the past. So I'm kind of comfortable choosing to do the skin or whatever area on, you know, a face. So I, I'm, I'm a little bit just because of my level. But for you beginners or even the intermediate, do your eyes. And I'm going to stop here because I'm really getting into contouring and I didn't want to do that. You can kind of, if it shows up on the film at this point. Um, so this is... I know she looks a little bit jaundiced. She looks a little bit jaundiced to me too because I haven't, I spent so little time doing this. Um, it definitely should be a little peachier, which is just more layers. That's all it is, is to keep going with your layers. And that yellow undertone will go away to the point where it is just an undertone.
Okay. I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, I had a little bit of trouble uploading the second part of the Halloween video. I had trouble uploading the, the Halloween video in general. I think it's YouTube, and that's why I, I stopped and did this, because I only have a couple days until I start my private lessons for the week. And I wanted to get this out there so that they can watch this preview video and I could take them further along. So take care and I will see you guys tomorrow.